everyone. I'm Sujini, faculty in physics at Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Hyderabad. Today, we are going to discuss about classification of magnetic materials. So, this will be the last topic in uh, the magnetic materials which we have been discussing. So, let us see the brief outline of how we are going to discuss about this topic. So, first we will be seeing the classification based on permeability, how we are going to classify the materials and then based on magnetic moment. Then we need some basic definitions to understand these classifications. So, we will also uh, again quickly see those definitions and then we will do the comparison between different types of materials based on the classification dia para and ferromagnetic materials. So now coming to the classification, solids are uh, mainly classified into three groups and that is based on the magnitude and the sign of the relative permeability which we call it as mu r. So based on the relative permeability, their values, the magnitude and the sign the solids are classified into three main groups. So, the first one is a diamagnetic material, diamagnetic, whose relative permeability will be less than 1. So, if the materials are having relative permeability less than 1, then we call them as diamagnetic materials. And if the relative permeability is greater than 1, then we call them as paramagnetic. And if the relative permeability is much, much higher than 1, greater than, very high than 1, then we call it as ferromagnetic materials. So, this is how we are uh, classifying the materials based on the values of relative permeability. So, let us understand actually what is permeability and what is relative permeability. So, permeability is the ability of the medium to pass the magnetic lines of force through it means if the permeability values are high means they will easily allow the lines of force to pass through them and if it is less they will not allow or they will feebly allow the lines of force to pass through them. Now there are three permeabilities mu, mu naught and mu r and how they are related mu is equal to mu naught into mu r or sometimes we write mu r is equal to mu upon mu naught. So, this is how they are related. So, mu is the absolute permeability of the medium. So, in whatever medium we are placing the substance or the solid, if that allows the lines of force to pass through them, then we decide the permeability. So, permeability of the given medium. Then mu naught here represents the permeability of free space that is air or vacuum. Mu naught always denotes the permeability of free space or vacuum. And mu r is the relative permeability. Relative means what? With respect to the other. So, mu r is written as mu upon mu naught. Mu is the permeability of the medium. And mu naught is the permeability of free space or vacuum. So, relative permeability is always the permeability of the medium with respect to the free space. Then we also need to understand about susceptibility. So, what is susceptibility? Susceptibility is a measure of the ease with which a material can be magnetized. If a material can be magnetized very easily, then its uh, chi value, that is the susceptibility value will be high. And we can also define a susceptibility as the magnetization that is produced per unit magnetic field. Means whenever we are placing a material in a magnetic field, the material gets magnetized means we say there is magnetization. Now, this magnetization M is directly proportional to H. 
H here is the applied field or the strength of the field that we are applying. So, magnetization is proportional to H. So, I can write this as uh, M is equal to some constant, proportionality constant, here which we call it as chi. Chi is the proportionality constant or we call it as susceptibility. So, we can easily write chi as M upon H. So, we have defined chi as the magnetization that is produced per unit applied magnetic field. So, materials that have high susceptibility, they are easily magnetized, highly susceptible we say, means they can be easily magnetized. So, on the reverse, if the susceptibility is low, they cannot be easily magnetized. Now comes the dipole or the magnetic dipole. So, how do we get these dipoles in a substance or in a magnetic material? So, each tiny dimension of a magnetic material and this tiny dimension can be an atom and that is called a magnetic dipole. And these magnetic dipoles, what they do? They produce magnetic moment depending upon the alignment with respect to the applied magnetic field. So, when we apply a magnetic field, the dipoles may get oriented. So, depending upon the alignment, they produce the magnetic moment. So, when the magnetic dipoles, that is atoms consisting of charged particles like protons and neutrons, they undergo orbital motion or spin motion, they produce magnetic moment. So, we have seen very clearly in the basic definitions. So, whenever we are considering an atom, we have the nucleus at the center and the electrons revolving around the nucleus in different orbits. Now, if you are having the electrons that are revolving like this, <coughs> An electron which is orbiting around the nucleus will give rise to magnetic moment. We call it as orbital magnetic moment. And also this electron will rotate about itself while uh, revolving around the nucleus. Just like the earth rotates around the sun and also it spins or rotates about its own axis. The We call the same way here. Electron is rotating about its own axis which gives rise to spin magnetic moment and it also revolves around the nucleus which gives rise to orbital magnetic moment and also the spin motion of the nucleus and especially the contribution from the nucleus is due to protons. So, that also gives rise to magnetic moment. So, the motion of the charged particles is considered as closed electric current loops that gives rise to magnetic moment. How we are getting this magnetic moment? So, whenever this electron is revolving around the nucleus in case of orbital magnetic moment, what happens here? It will is uh, like a, it is similar to a current loop that produces the magnetic moment. Now, uh, coming to the behavior of magnetic materials and their behavior can be explained based on the electron theory. So, what is the electron theory? We have seen the revolving electron which revolves in various orbits around the nucleus will have orbital motion as well as spin motion and it behaves like a magnetic dipole which gives rise to magnetic moment. So, the magnetic moment and the alignment of the magnetic moment decides which type of material or which type of magnetic material it is going to be. Now, most of the magnetic moment is produced due to electron spin. So, we have seen three different things, electron orbital motion, electron spin motion and also due to the nucleus. But the major contribution is always due to the electron spin and the magnetic moment vectors are oriented in different directions. The orientation of this magnetic moment may be different in different atoms. 
Now, alternatively, uh, there is another classification that is based on magnetic dipole moments. Means, based on what we have discussed now, how the magnetic moments are appearing in a given atom. So, based on the magnetic moment also, we can classify the materials into two broad groups. The first one is materials without permanent magnetic moment. If there are materials which do not have any permanent magnetic moment, then that is one group and the second group will have a permanent magnetic moment. So, two broad classifications. So, first let us see what are these materials without permanent magnetic moment. So, diamagnetic materials are materials consisting of zero magnetic dipole moment. Means, they do not have a permanent magnetic moment. Why they do not have, we will understand. So, diamagnetic materials, they exhibit negative magnetic susceptibility. So, their susceptibility, chi value is negative. So, the magnetization M in a diamagnetic material is directed opposite to the direction of the applied field and hence the susceptibility is negative. So, when we have discussed that M is proportional to H, means when we are applying a magnetic field, the material is getting magnetized. But in case of a diamagnetic material, what happens here is, this magnetization is in a direction opposite to that of the applied field. That is why the value of chi, that is susceptibility, is negative. And this value of susceptibility is very small. The value is very small of the order of 10 power minus 6. So, it is very small and in opposite direction. And as the susceptibility is negative, the relative permeability mu r is less than 1. So, what we are understanding about diamagnetic materials is they do not have a permanent dipole moment and their value of chi is negative because they are in the opposite direction. Magnetization is in the direction opposite to that of the applied field and because this is negative, what we understand here is the relative permeability should be less than 1. So, only when chi, mu r is less than 1, chi will be negative because we know the relation between chi and mu r. Chi is equal to mu r minus 1. So, when the value of mu r is less than 1, only then chi value will be negative. We know that chi is negative and mu r is less than 1. So, how it is possible because chi is mu r minus 1. So, when mu r is less than 1, something less than 1 minus 1 will give us negative value. So, these two points we need to understand. Whenever we talk about diamagnetic materials, the susceptibility is negative and the relative permeability is less than 1. And also, these diamagnetic materials, they are repelled by the magnetic field. So, that itself shows that why the magnetization is in the direction opposite to that of the applied field. Because they are repelled by the magnetic field. So, whenever we are placing a diamagnetic body in a homogeneous magnetic field, it tends to be pushed into the regions of weaker field because it is being repelled. So, from the stronger field side to the weaker field side, it gets pushed. So, when it is taken in the form of a small rod and freely suspended. So, we are taking a diamagnetic material and when you suspend it freely in a magnetic field, it always turns perpendicular to the field lines. Means, suppose this is the magnetic field we have directed like this field. We are taking a rod in the form of a rod, a diamagnetic material and we are suspending it freely like this with the help of a string. Now, what happens? What it happens here is it turns in a direction perpendicular to the field lines. Means, 
it will automatically rotate and align itself in this direction perpendicular to the magnetic field. So you may place it in any direction in this field but it will always rotate and align itself in a direction perpendicular to the applied magnetic field. Now we have discussed that uh, diamagnetic materials push aside the field lines. So how do they push aside the field lines? Let us see in this diagram. We have a magnetic field which is represented by this magnet, north pole and the south pole of the magnet. So the field lines are like this. These are the lines, magnetic lines of force. Now whenever we are placing a dielectric material in this, then there are, it behaves as a dipole and there will be magnetic moment. But what happens here is, because of the negative susceptibility, we can say these lines are pushed aside. So what you can see, those lines which are straight here, now they are pushed away from the material like this. Means these lines are avoiding this diamagnetic material. So I can say they are pushed away. Pushed away means they are departing from the diamagnetic material. So this is how the lines of force are going to be in a dielectric material when it is placed in a magnetic field. Next comes the second classification, materials with permanent magnetic moment. So with, uh, no, magne with no magnetic moment or resultant magnetic moment is zero, we have seen the diamagnetic materials. Now we are going to discuss about materials with permanent magnetic moment. So based on the interaction between the magnetic dipoles, they are dividing, we are dividing this group into four types. There are four types. The first one is paramagnetic material. Second is ferromagnetic material. And the third one is anti-ferromagnetic material. And the fourth one is ferrimagnetic material. So all these are having permanent magnetic moment but their interaction will be different. So based on the interaction of these magnetic dipoles, we are classifying them into four groups. Now we will see them one by one separately and understand what they are. Now, if the interaction between the atomic magnetic dipoles is negligible, if the interaction is negligible between the dipoles, then the material is paramagnetic. So, paramagnetic when the interaction is negligible. Next, if the dipoles orient or interact in such a way, they orient in the same direction. All the dipoles get oriented in the same direction after interaction. Then we call it as ferromagnetic. So, a ferromagnetic material is the one in which all the dipoles will get oriented in the same direction. Then comes the third one. If the neighboring dipoles orient in opposite directions and they are of equal magnitude, means the magnitude of the dipoles is equal but their orientation is opposite. If you are uh, comparing with the neighboring dipole, if this dipole is like this, the neighboring dipole will be in the opposite direction. Means they have the same magnitude but oriented in opposite direction, then we call it as anti anti-ferromagnetic. Then the fourth one, if the neighboring dipoles are of different magnitude and orient anti-parallel, then we call it as ferrimagnetic. So the magnitude is also different here and the orientation is also anti-parallel, then we call it as ferrimagnetic. We can understand what we have discussed with the help of this figure. The first one, figure A shows a paramagnetic material. So in paramagnetic material, what we have discussed, there is no much interaction between the dipoles and the orientation may not be the same. This is how they are oriented in different directions or random directions in case of paramagnetic material. Now comes B. B is what? Ferromagnetic material. 
So in ferromagnetic material, what we have seen, all the dipoles, all the dipoles are oriented in the same direction. If you can see, they are oriented in the upward direction here in this diagram. So all are oriented in the same direction, then you call it as ferromagnetic material. Now the third one is C. In C, it is anti-ferromagnetic. In anti-ferromagnetic, what we have seen, the neighboring dipoles have the same magnitude but opposite in direction. So if this is upward, this is downward, this is upward, these are the neighboring ones. So always we are trying to compare with the neighboring one. So they are in opposite direction. So you call it as anti-ferromagnetic. And then the third one is ferrimagnetic. In ferrimagnetic also, they are in opposite direction, but the magnitude is also different. You see here, if this is one dipole, this is the other dipole, the magnitude is small. So they are anti-parallel and with lesser magnitude. So this is how we are uh, based on their direction and magnitude, we are classifying them. Now, paramagnetic materials, they exhibit positive magnetic susceptibility. So, the susceptibility for paramagnetic materials is positive. So, I can say chi is positive. And the magnetization coincides with the direction of the magnetic field. That is why M is directly proportional to H and it is in the same direction. It gets magnetized in the same direction as the applied field. So, M is proportional to H and it is in the same direction. And susceptibility is of the order of 10 power minus 6. It is small. Susceptibility is small, but it is positive. And the relative permeability mu r, mu r is the relative permeability. It is the ratio of permeability of the media to the permeability in free space. It is slightly more than unity. So, mu r is greater than 1 for paramagnetic materials. And the field lines are pulled towards the material and permeate through it. Permeate means will pass through it when it is placed in a magnetic field. So, whenever you take a paramagnetic material and place it in a magnetic field, the lines of force will pass through them. We will see it in the figure. So, this is a paramagnetic material placed in the magnetic field, north-south magnet and these are the lines of force, magnetic lines of force and we have placed a paramagnetic material. So, when we are placing a paramagnetic material, these lines of force will try to pass through the material. So, this is how they are passing through the material. They always try to pass through the material. So, means it will allow the lines of force to pass through there. Now, coming to the relationship between M and H, it's a linear function of magnetic field when the field is not too strong and paramagnetic susceptibility is dependent on temperature also. So, how it is dependent on temperature is when we plot a graph taking Temperature along the x-axis and 1 by chi along the y-axis. We have taken the values of 1 by chi along the y-axis. You see, you observe in case of a strong field, you see, see that it is linear. You will have with the different temperatures the values of 1 by chi when you plot. Means the Curie's law says that chi para is equal to C upon T. C here is the Curie constant. C is what? Curie constant and T is the temperature. So, what we understand from this relation when I take chi into T, this should be a constant. So, this shows the linear relationship between the two. Now, coming to ferromagnetic materials. We are going to talk about ferromagnetic materials. They exhibit very high values of magnetic susceptibility and relative permeability. So, in ferro, these values are very high. Very high of the order of 10 power 6 
when we have seen for para it is 10 power minus 6 and here it is of the order of 10 power 6 and the relative permeability is the of the order of few thousands and when a ferromagnetic material is kept in a magnetic field the lines will crowd into the material the field lines will crowd into the material means because it allows the lines of force to pass through and it is highly permeable because we have seen the relative permeability is very high highly permeable it will allow all the lines of force to pass through them and when we take it in the form of a shell the magnetic lines are mainly concentrated in the shell only and without extending into the cavity we'll see the figure and understand so this is how we are placing a ferromagnetic material this is a ferromagnetic material placed in a magnetic field now what we see here is these lines of force most of them will try to pass through the ferromagnetic material means they are rushing inside because it is its permeability is very high and now when we are taking it in the form of a shell all the lines are focused inside and not extending outside so this is what we see about a ferro magnetic material now coming to the relationship between the magnetization and the applied field h so it does not vary linearly with the applied field h it is a very complex linear function of the field strength so now if you see the figure here we have taken h the magnetic field strength along the x axis and we have taken the magnetic induction b along the y axis now when we have taken we are plotting the graph for h versus b the curve is something like this it is not linear but it is a complex function so because of this non linear relationship between b and h permeability will not have a constant value that is what we understand its value keeps on varying now the specific properties of these uh, materials ferromagnetic materials manifest only in crystalline state at temperatures lower than a certain temperature so when we are taking a ferromagnetic material and vary the temperature their properties may vary means only below a certain temperature they behave like ferromagnetic materials above which they are not so they are characterized by a definite temperature tc which we call it as curie temperature means this curie temperature is the temperature below which the material will behave like a ferromagnetic material and above which the ferromagnetic properties will disappear that is why this uh, temperature is very important so if you see in the graph here this is t versus 1 by chi we are seeing the graph like this and at a particular temperature which we call as the theta c and what is the formula according to curie wiese law chi is equal to c upon t minus tc here t is the temperature and tc here is the curie temperature and definitely t has to be if t is greater than tc then this is positive value and c is the curie constant now let us try to compare and contrast uh, different materials what we have discussed diamagnetic paramagnetic and ferromagnetic so coming to the first property diamagnetic substances they are repelled by the magnet paramagnetic they are weakly attracted by the magnets and ferromagnetic materials they are strongly attracted so coming to the property of attraction diamagnetic substances are being repelled paramagnetic they are showing weak attraction and ferromagnetic they are strongly attracted by the magnet now the second one when placed in a magnetic material the diamagnetic materials acquire feeble magnetization 
feeble means very low magnetization in a direction opposite to that of the applied field. So, M and H are opposite in direction. Whatever magnetization that is produced is in a direction opposite to that of the applied field. In case of paramagnetic, they acquire feeble magnetization. It is less, but it is in the direction same as that of the applied field. So, in a paramagnetic substance, the magnetization is in the same direction, but it is less. And when coming to the ferromagnetic material, they acquire high magnetization in the direction same as that of the applied field. So, this is the difference when it comes to acquiring the magnetization. Now, the third one, atoms of diamagnetic materials have even number of electrons which form electron pairs. And in the electron pair, the direction of the spin of one electron is opposite to that of the other. Therefore, each atom will possess zero magnetic moment. So, in diamagnetic material, the electrons are always in pairs. So, I may write it like this also. Generally, we write it like this. So, what we are talking here is when they are occurring in pairs, the spin of one is in the upward direction, the spin of the other is in the downward direction. They cancel each other and so the net magnetic moment will be zero. But whereas in paramagnetic materials, what is happening? Their orbitals are oriented in a random way and each atom possesses permanent magnetic moment. Here they are having zero magnetic moment. Diamagnetic moments are those which do not have a permanent magnetic moment. But whereas paramagnetic moment materials, they have a permanent magnetic moment because their orientation is in random direction. Now coming to ferromagnetic materials, they are orderly oriented. They are oriented in a particular direction and they possess enormous magnetic moment. The magnetic moment of these ferromagnetic materials is very, very high. Now coming to susceptibility. Susceptibility means it is the ease with which the material can be magnetized. So, chi is small and it is negative and it is independent of temperature. So, three things we are understanding. Chi is small, chi is negative and it is independent of temperature in case of diamagnetic material. But when we see paramagnetic material, chi is small but positive. The value of chi is positive and it is inversely proportional to temperature. There is a relationship but it is inversely proportional to temperature. We have seen chi is equal to C upon T. No? So, there is inverse proportionality between the then in case of ferromagnetic material, chi is large, the value of chi is large and it is positive. It depends on temperature in a complex manner. So there is complexity, there is no linearity here. No, that is why the values of permeability are not constant. And coming to the spin, no spin alignment is present. In case of diamagnetic, no spin alignment and in paramagnetic, all spins are randomly oriented and here the spins or magnetic moments are orderly oriented. So, here in the first case in diamagnetic substance, what we have seen because there are always the electrons occur in pairs, they cancel each other and the net magnetic moment is zero. So, there is no spin alignment. But when it comes to a paramagnetic material, they are randomly oriented. And in ferro, they are orderly oriented. So, there will be a net magnetic moment. Now, coming to the sixth one. In the presence of magnetic field, the magnetic lines of force are pulled out of the material. Means, uh, if you are having a diamagnetic material, Placing it in a magnetic field, 
these lines of force are pulled away from the material. They are going away like this. Uh, they are not passing through. We have already seen in the diagrams above. And in paramagnetic, what we are seeing here, the magnetic lines of force are attracted towards the center of the material. So when we are having a paramagnetic material and we have the lines of force, they will try to pass through the material like this, attracted towards the material. And here, they are highly attracted towards the center. Means all of them will concent get concentrated towards the material only. North and south, there will be more and more lines of force due to the magnetic field that are concentrated inside. So that is the difference between dia, para and ferro. Next, uh, the seventh one, if the temperature is increased above transition temperature, the diamagnetic material will behave like a normal material. It will not behave as diamagnetic above the transition temperature. Now, when it comes to paramagnetic, at higher temperatures, the value of chi becomes negative. Actually, we have seen for paramagnetic material, chi is positive. But as you increase the temperature, what happens? Chi becomes negative. Negative means it will show the properties of diamagnetic material. So, as the temperature increases, it may start behaving like a diamagnetic material. Now, in case of ferromagnetic, when the temperature increases uh, above the Curie temperature, it gets converted into a paramagnetic material. A ferromagnetic material will show the properties of paramagnetic material. That is how uh, the temperature affects these materials. Then coming to the eighth one, the relative permeability mu r is less than 1. Positive. And relative permeability mu r is greater than 1. Here we see mu r is greater than 1. And in ferromagnetic, mu r is of the order of thousands, much, much greater than 1. And the last one coming to the examples of diamagnetic material, we have bismuth, zinc, water and aurum. And paramagnetic materials are aluminium, platinum, manganese, copper chloride. All these exhibit paramagnetic behavior. And ferromagnetic, iron, cobalt, nickel and uh, ferric oxide, all of them exhibit ferromagnetic behavior. So, for more classification uh, details regarding this topic, you can refer to the book's uh, Introduction to Electrodynamics by David J. Griffiths or Concepts of Physics by H.C. Verma or Unified Physics by Electricity, Magnetism and Electronics by Dr. S.L. Gupta. Thank you and see you again in the next lecture. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.